All right, guys. Welcome back to the Blackburn Farm. Um, going to start in on a chicken coop today. I'm going to try to put this all into one video. Um, it's still all new to me, so hang hang tight if you guys have any suggestions or any recommendations. I'm more than happy to hear about them. Uh, but right now we already have some chickens, so I want the transition from the old coop to the new coop to be as quick as possible. So I'm hoping to get this whole thing assembled in one day once we tear down the old chicken coop. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and frame up and side all the walls so that that part's done. Once I, I assemble the floor structure, um, just throw the walls up and, and the roof on and we'll worry about siding and whatnot later. So this wall, the end of it's gonna butt up to my shorter eight foot wall. Uh, reason for that is because I didn't take a good look at my lumber whenever I bought this. And uh, it's pretty messed up down there on the other end. So we know we're gonna have three and a half inches of two by four framing and then a half inch sheet OSB. So I'm gonna let that hang out four inches. And from the end of my tape, I'm gonna build this two foot on center. So. I want 24 inches to end up in the center of the stud. So every two foot, 24, and then I'm gonna come back three quarter. Put a crow's foot and X. The X is for the side that the, that the stud's gonna fall in. So once I get that one, I'm going to, uh, I haven't worn a tool belt in a while, so once I start that first one, I'm just going to drive a nail in there, that way I can hook my tape on it, and uh, I'll know that it's just every two feet after that. And then I'm going to cut the total length of it, put a, a line for my cut mark, it's going to be 12 feet minus 8 inches. This comes to 11 foot four. If, uh, if you guys are using carpentry pencils and you've never sharpened one, there's a trick to it. Just take little slivers out in long strokes and you won't break off the lead is easy. And then once I get close to the lead, I just trim it back. I'm gonna cut outside, that way I don't make as much of a mess inside my shop. All right, the other thing, Landy's out, tells you how many studs you need. You need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. With that being said, I bought pre-cut two buys or just to make it an even eight foot wall. I want to end up with a total of a six foot wall for the low side of this chicken coop. It's just gonna be a shed design. Um, with that said, six foot is what I want overall. And then that's an inch and a half for the bottom plate and then three inches for your two top plates. So we're going to end up with 67 and a half inches and that'll give us a total of six feet. I'll try carrying them all at once, but you'll usually fail. I haven't shot this nail gun in a while, so I might have to adjust it a little bit. So flush up your two ends. Your two boards. Our 
four inches to overhang. Mark that on our plywood, OSD. All right, guys. All right. It's 44 inches plus our four inches, so it'll be an even four feet, which makes sense because we're making a four or a eight by 12. So eight foot, four foot. I don't really like using them anyways. What I like to do is I'll mark my four feet and then I'll take my razor knife and put a little slice right there at the four feet. Check it, make sure it's right. And then I just put my line right in there.
door so looking at the coop the door is going to be on the right hand side and um, it, it's an old antique door I don't know we we found it probably when I was a little bitty kid my mom found it at a garage sale or something I honestly I don't have a clue where this door came from but I have moved it around and around and around and I'm gonna use that stinking door because I've moved it enough times we've tried keeping it out of the weather enough times and over the years, um, it deserves a shot. Now, if it's a pain in the butt, we uh, we might change that plan. But until then, my plan is to use that door. So, with that being said, we're going to put it in this wall. So, remember, we uh, off of 12 foot, we're going to take 8 inches off for our two other walls. So, that puts us at 11 foot 4. So, I'll go ahead and trim these down to 11 foot 4. So that stinking door, it measures 32 inches. Um, it doesn't have a frame, it's just a door. So I think what I'm gonna do is just frame it out of, do a door frame out of uh, my two by six treated. So with that being said, it's 32 inches plus three inches for side to side, puts us at 35. And then we want some room to shim and some wiggle room. Um, so I'm gonna call it 36 inches. Um, and my plan is to have a four foot walkway inside this coop. So really it'll be three foot eight is what the walkway is gonna be. So we've got one stud there and then four inches out. I wanna get away from that corner some. So really I wanna be as far this way as I can. I've already got a stud here. So I think what I'm gonna do, is we'll flip this around. We'll make our cripple stud and our king stud. This one that's already here. Then this one will go away. And then from the inside of that cripple, we want 30, six inches to our next cripple. So that'll give us a cripple there. So cripple, cripple, king, king. And this one will go away. Now, I haven't looked too close at this door yet. I might have to trim it down. If the bottom's rotted off, like I said, we tried keeping it protected, but it's, it's not in the best of, of shape, I would assume. So, no flat tires. So, I'm not going to put the cripple studs in yet. I can I can always do that later. Um,
Now, one thing we're going to try to do is um, go ahead and cut our rafters. So in order to do that, I'm going to try to halfway assemble these walls and just stick it together with a couple screws that I can take out easy. Um, so we'll see. My original intent was for this wall to come out and be your lead wall, and then this one tie into it. Um, but because those two by fours were messed up, I decided to go a different route, and now I'm regretting that decision because that's the way it should have been framed. So we're gonna make it work. Just gonna have to get a little creative. So in order to make it work. Efficient carpentry, you want to always look for your crowns. These uh these are pretty ratty old two by sixes, they're kind of twisted, but for the chicken coop it's gonna work, work out just fine. So what you want to do is you want to look for the bow. Some of these boards won't have a whole lot of them, a whole lot of bow. But what you want to do is is look for that bow and put the high side towards the sky. That way, over time, gravity will pull down on it or the weight of the roof will push down on it, and you'll be a lot closer. Um, you want to do that for every single board so that you don't have some going like this and some going like that, and then your purlins um, get all wavy. You want it to be consistent. Um, I might try to find a different board because this one's pretty... This one's kind of dirty, but it's a heck of a lot straighter. I just see the slightest bit of bow going this way. So what I do is I put an arrow of which way I want that board to face. For me, the arrow always points up. I don't know what I can do. If you guys read the description on my page at all. It uh, says can't never accomplish anything. And I had the guy that I learned most of my carpentry from is the guy that told me that a long time ago. Anytime I said, I don't know how, or I, if I said, I don't know how, he'd show me. If I said, I can't do it, he'd show me. And uh, he never let me say can't. And uh, and brought me a long way, so remember that. You can always do it. You just gotta figure out how. Well, I didn't really choose an angle or anything. I just know that I want just a little bit of that two by four. Just a, well, we'll make it flush. There'll be enough stuff tying all this together where I, I won't have to worry about it. Um, but you'll see. You'll see what I'm doing here in just a second. Man, the 
always told me never to say can't. He, uh, I won't say his name on here, but I always called him RD. I'll tell you what, him telling me that a long time ago. I don't know if I like it or I don't because, man, I busted my butt sometimes trying to figure out a way to do something. So, you see, I stuck those in there. Now it holds it for me. I know these are 12 foot long. Um, I'm going to cut them down a little bit shorter. That way my metal overhangs on both ends and get some of the water away from the... Uh, away from the building. So I'll, I'll cut them a little short. So if it's 12 foot metal, um, I'll cut this board at 11 six and that'll give me about three inches of overhang. And then by the time you put a fascia board on, you only have an inch and a half. And uh, that should be plenty. I might put a gutter on the back side back here so that uh, I can catch rainwater to feed the chickens or it automatically not feed the chickens, water the chickens, but it automatically water the chickens, um, anything like that. So what I'm going to do real quick, let's see how level my shop floor is. So what I've done, I made little notches to uh, to hold that rafter up there. I crowned it, I marked my arrow, and I put a plumb line so that when my fascia goes on there, it'll be plumb. I did the same thing down there, double checked my measurements where I had 21 inches. And uh, so now we'll go on this back side. We're going to mark this board. So we're going to mark mark it there. And mark it back here. Of course, you probably didn't see it, but I just scribed this. So this rafter is actually hanging on the outside of the chicken coop and this is the mark that I'm going to cut. I'll cut that little section out. I'll cut this little section out of this board and then it'll get nailed through there into the top plate. Here's our template. Let's go ahead and write temp on it. What I want to do is check both these ends. This one's right at 15 degrees. And this one's the same. So I just want to make sure I didn't get my bubble off funny or something. On the level. So we'll go ahead and cut these off. That's our template. Now, off this worthless stack, just keep on going.
now I'm going to go ahead and cut all of my um, all of my flooring framing. Uh, so I need two eight footers and I believe seven 12 footers. When I say 12 footers, I really mean 11 foot nine because by the time I have my two eight foot in boards, girder boards, um, then I'll lose an inch and a half on each end. So 12 foot minus three inches is 11 foot nine. So again, some of these are rough. This one has got a broken end on it. So I'm going to just trim them down, use this one for an eight footer and uh, we'll get all these cut. That'll be one less thing we have to do tomorrow. This is going to be the fun part. I got to get all these walls loaded on this tray. So, push them up. Day. We got the walls built, we got all the rafters cut, got all the floor joists cut, and last minute I changed the way I'm going to do the flooring a little bit. Instead of just spanning the whole 12 feet, I'm going to put a couple beams on posts um, instead of just connecting the, the floor framing straight to the post. Uh, we're going to set on top of a couple 2 by 6 and uh, that will allow us to reduce the amount of, of clear span between all the support. Um, It'll work out. It'll work out a lot better, I think. So, thanks. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll uh, pick back up on this in the morning.